Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. I have something to convey to you that I have to convey in an extremely roundabout way uh, for my own safety and for the safety of other people as well. And I hope some of you will be able to to benefit from it even though I'm speaking very rotundly at the moment. There was a story once, it was a myth, about a woman named Letta and a swan that she had a love affair with and that she became pregnant by, I think. The story of Letta and the swan. Um, now, there's something about swans. They, they look very proud, kind of arrogant. They look very, very beautiful. They fly through the air, and typically they don't make women pregnant, you know. But it, I suppose it's possible that a woman could think in an erotic manner about a swan. So, for people who have a concern about astral rape, otherwise known as psychic rape, which I have a large section on my site, um, Astral rape is a little like the story of Letta and the Swan because something that feels like you are being raped or having intercourse if you're a woman, uh, depending on your receptivity to the notion, flies through the air and lands and seems to actually be having uh, sexual intercourse with you. So in a way, the notion of astral rape is similar to the myth of Leda and the swan. There's um, a song, a very ancient song, about the demon lover that was in recent years changed some into a song about a house carpenter with the same uh, tune. The story of the demon lover is a lot like the story of Leda and the Swan and also of astral rape. Uh, there's someone that flies through the air and seems to make love to the woman and causes her to leave her husband and her children behind and go off sailing across the seas, possibly in an empty boat an empty bark and never to see them again. She loses touch with her family life and in my opinion goes off into a world of the imagination because of the demon lover. This demon lover is to my th way of thinking a type of astral being, negative astral being that can cause that um, stimulation of the second chakra of human beings and at the same time attack through mind control. In a woman frequently that being stimulates also the heart chakra giving her a feeling that she is in love with someone uh, when in fact there's no one there at all. It can take away her life from her. It can take away her family her husband and her children. It can turn her to the world of dreams and remove her feet from the Mother Earth. In a man it can do the same, but not through stimulation of the heart chakra. It tends to degenerate into stimulation of the first and second chakras and lead to the practice of homosexuality in a manner that um, descends into sadomasochism. In both cases, I think, it's good to, to turn to those anchors of the faith that one has had in childhood, if, if lucky enough to have done so, and use those anchors to, to, to prevent the onslaught of these demons. Okay? And uh, in addition, I would like to say, 
For those that feel themselves arrogant and spiritual teachers, who feel that they are the beautiful swans of this world and that other people are ugly ducklings compared to them, in, those people are in danger of, um, of being uh, consorted with by those demon beings that then turn the people they meet into these paths of unrighteousness, if you see what I mean. So, so I have a lead on, from diverse traditions, the notion of the demon lover, and I have a thought that through our traditional faiths and the symbols of those faiths and the sacraments of those faiths, we can overcome that loathsome fate inspired by those malevolent astral beings. I wish you all Godspeed in avoiding them and returning to the ways of humankind in the light of God's love and peace and joy. This time of great tribulation for humankind. You know, tribulation offers various avenues for us. It offers us a chance to grow in faith or a chance to fall down in despair. It's up to us. It's our free will. We have these choices moment to moment in this time of tribulation. God bless you all and keep you safe.